Um, yeah, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. It's nice to see a, a full uh, house. Um, I'm Richard Wall, a senior developer with Cluster HQ. We're hiring. Uh, so come and see us at the booth. Um, I'm telling you, I'm going to talk to you today about a technique we use at work for um, testing our, our software, a piece of software that I work on called Flocker. Um, in particular, a technique that we use for ensuring that um, the APIs that we write and the implementations of those APIs are easily testable and a, a technique we use to ensure that all of the implementations of the API, the, the real implementations and the fake implementation, um, are in sync and that they behave the same. So I'm going to start uh, with an introduction. Um, the, the talk is going to uh, comprise uh, a, a quick uh, discussion of the problems that we're trying to solve using these um, verified fakes. Uh, hopefully a, 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 an in-depth discussion of the solution that we've come up with and then hope, I hope that I'll have some time at the end for questions. Um, but if anyone has a burning question then just put your hand up while I'm talking and I'll, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be nice for me because it'll interrupt, uh, I won't have to be speaking all the time. Okay, so first of all Let's talk about the, one of the. There are a number. There are a number of problems with testing um, APIs using unverified fakes or sort of ad hoc mocks or uh, stubs in your tests. And these aren't these aren't things that I. These aren't ideas of mine. These these uh, have been discussed at previous um, icons, for example, by a couple of guys called Orgy. I think he pronounced it Orgy Fackler and Nathaniel Minister. Uh, and they gave a great talk on uh, entitled Stop um, Mocking and Start Testing. And so they say, uh, well, I'm reading here from some a sort of a transcript written by Ned Batchelder. Um, Everyone at, the, at Google, where they worked, made their own mock objects. We had n different implementations of the mock. And when the real code changed, you have to find all of those mocks and update them all. And this is a problem that um, I've seen um, in... Twisted, for example. Oops, I'm not used to it. There we are. So I, um, I've got quite an interest in the Twisted project. Um, I did some work on the Twisted Names module uh, last year. And so I wondered um, if this proliferation of unverified um, mock objects affects Twisted. And it does, because uh, Twisted is about 12 or more years old. And so I grabbed for the... Uh, for, fake, for, for uh, fake classes in the, across the Twisted code base. And there are at least seven implementations of the, twist, of the Twisted uh, base protocol and six uh, fake reactors. Um, and the one I was, I'm probably most guilty of or responsible for is the five copies of the fake resolver in the in Twisted names uh, package. I'm not sure, they may not, they may not all be... Um, there may be good reasons for some of this duplication, but I'm sure that some of these could be, uh, are, are examples of fakes that could be replaced with a single verified uh, fake which could be used throughout the code base. So that's twisted, and it, it's, uh, it's guilty of having these unverified fakes. The next problem with uh, unverified fakes and mocks is that they don't... Um, it's easy to write some ad hoc class which behaves just about the same as the uh, API that you're trying to test. But the trouble is that they're often, they're often inaccurate from the very start and then they grow more inaccurate as the actual real API develops. And so I was looking while writing this talk frantically over the last couple of days for an example of this and someone mentioned to me at the stand um, a, 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 a library which I'm quite interested in called uh, Nova Docker, uh, which is a driver for OpenStack Nova, which allows you to create uh, Nova instances um, as Docker containers. And so I wondered, um, how, do they, how do they test that the Nova driver, that they put the Docker driver that they've written, um, be, uh, behaves properly with, the real, with a real Docker uh, daemon, which would be slow and... Um, and, and expensive to run uh, versus uh, an in-memory uh, version of the Docker client, and I found that they have um, they have actually implemented a, a fake uh, Docker client, 
and it suffers from these problems that I've just described in that the, uh, the fake has got out of sync with the, the real uh, Docker client. It may always have been out of sync. It may, it may never have, it, because they don't run the, the tests um, against the, both the fake and the real client, they, they, they may never have been in sync. So here's an example uh, of, 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 of what can go wrong. Uh, sorry. So we've, we've imported here both the, uh, the mock client from Nova Docker, and we've imported the real client from Docker Pi. And we instantiate them both. And we see how the real client behaves when we create a, a new Docker container. So all you have to supply when you create a new Docker container using Docker Pi is the image name upon which the container is based. And it returns a, a dictionary containing the ID, the 64-digit ID of that container, and a list or, or, or a, a, a summary of any warnings that have occurred while that container has been created, in, in creating that container. And um, that's not the greatest API. It's a pretty ugly, it should really be returning something uh, something like a, a class or a record of some sort uh, containing that information rather than just a, a dictionary, but it is what it is. Um, and then we look at the uh, Nova Docker, the fake uh, implementation that I found, and we can see that the first thing I tried to do was to supply it with the same keyword arguments, and it fails immediately because it is, they, they, haven't, they haven't used the same uh, argument names. And then this is just one example. I then went on and I tried, I tried and tried to create a, a, a fake uh, container using their API, and I found it doesn't return the same result. It doesn't uh, raise the same exceptions. It doesn't have the same optional arguments as the real API. And some of this, some of this may be uh, because they've based their fake on an earlier version of Docker Pi, but I think actually that's not. It's, there are some real problems here, which mean that I can't use this fake uh, in my code, which I'd quite like to do. Okay, so can we do any better? Well. Let's think about what we the ideal the ideal for a verified fake. Ideally, we want something that provides the same interface as the real API. Um, we want to be able to run the same tests against the fake as we run against the the real client. And ideally, um, ideally, we'd we'd like the the fake to be maintained by the same author that that wrote the real implementation. That's quite rare, but um, I hope that, um, that that will become more common. And I'll show you an example of, in a minute of someone requesting just that. So, uh, we're, I, I, haven't explained, I haven't really explained what Docker Pi is, but I think probably most of you are familiar with it. It's, um, it's a library that wraps the uh, Docker Demons REST API um, in Python. And it is something that we use at work quite a lot. So it just seemed, a, it seemed something, it's something which I'm familiar with. It seemed an easy uh, target to pick on. But it, it, there's, there's lots of examples like this. So don't, don't think I'm picking on this in particular. OK, so I wondered when I uh, started writing the talk, um, is anyone else um, thinking the same thing that I am? And funnily enough, there is an issue on Docker on Docker Pi's GitHub. Someone has come and asked, is there any uh, made the statement that any usage of Docker Pi requires unit testing. The latter requires a fake client that does not require a Docker daemon to be running. Providing a mock implementation will avoid every single user having to re-implement its own mock. And he says this is a nice to have. Well, it is a nice to have, but it's probably it, 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 Ideally, every library would come with such a fake so that we all don't have to re-implement our own uh, dodgy, unverified fakes. Okay. So what I'm going to show you now is um, my um, crude attempt to write a, a, a fake, a verified fake for Docker Pi. Any questions so far? If not, I'll carry on. So the, when, when you embark on this project, the first thing you want to know is 
where is the where is the authoritative uh, documentation on the API? What exactly am I trying to? Um, what am I? What exactly is my fake got to provide? Um, ideally, I was I was hoping that I'd find something in the code which would which would specify an interface, but Dockerpy hasn't got that. All it's got is um, documentation written in Markdown, um, which is okay, but in a, in a separate another topic for another talk for some other time would be um, the advantages of using uh, well-defined interfaces in your code and turning the, the doc strings in those interfaces into API docs. That's not what they do, so that's fine. I found the, the API doc, so then I've got something I can start looking at to, uh, and, and implementing in my fake. Um, so yes, yeah, so let's let's. Uh, the first thing I wrote was um, a, a Zoom interface. Um, I don't hope some of, hope most of you are familiar with this. It's uh, it's it's something I'm familiar with from uh, the Twisted project, um, and I think there are alternatives, but I haven't used any. There's the um, abstract base classes that are available in Python now. But I, I've never used those, so I I I, I I've, I'm def I've gone with what I'm familiar with. And so. Um, we start with a, an implement a, a ZOP interface called iDocker client, and we inherit from ZOP's interface uh, uh, base class, and we define um, for each of the API um, methods described in this case in the, in the docs. We create a, a not a not a method of this, but a, a, a function in the self. In I decided to just start with the bare minimum of the, of the create a container um, a method, and by by bare minimum, I mean I, I haven't I haven't added all of the uh, the arguments and all of the um, uh, the optional arguments yet. I'm just going to do do what exactly just just what's necessary to, for me to make for me to be able to use this fake and the real uh, client together. So next thing I do is create a test to verify that the um, implementations of that interface um, actually adhere to it. Um, and it's very easy. Uh, Zope interface provides us with tools to help do that. Um, we, we have a, met a test method called test interface. And we use the verify object um, function, which checks that the uh, instance that you pass to it provides all of the methods that are defined in the interface. It, it doesn't go so far as checking that the um, arguments are all uh, the same, but that, that's something which I'd, I, it would be nice to have, and I've often thought it might be something that I'd, I'd quite like to write. So then with that test in place, notice that the test, whoops, notice that the test is defined in a mix-in uh, class. We're not actually defining a test case here. I'll show you how this works in a, in a moment. But with that test written, we can run the tests um, against the real and the fake Docker client. And having um, decorated the classes, the, 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 the Docker Pi client class and our fake client class with um, the Zope interface uh, implements decorator, we can see that both, uh, both, both implementations now pass the test. And I'll show, again, I, I, I just want to show you some, some results before I delve into the, um, the actual details of how this works. Um, so the structure, in order to get this result, I'm running trial, which is a twisted unit test um, harness, against tests.integration test, real Docker client tests. And I'm also running the tests, the unit tests, uh, tests test fake docker client test. So we have those two, we have the integration test, the, the, the slower tests which, which exercise the real docker daemon in a separate module from the, the fake, uh, the, the unit tests which operate on a fake in memory uh, implementation of the interface. Um, and that's, that's a nice way to, that's the way we organize our tests um, at, at work, but maybe, maybe we wouldn't organized a little bit differently. I was, I was making use of some existing uh, integration test modules and existing test modules in Dockerpy. But it's nice to keep the two, the two sets of tests separate. Um, and the other thing that we, we, we do is we have the, um, we organize
organize the code in such a way that the, the, uh, the tests, the test mixing, which we saw earlier, and the fake implementation are, are, are put in a public module. They are, which means that they're not hidden, they can be imported by any libraries that consume this um, package. And it means that uh, we, we can we can we can use the, we can use the tools we've created, and other libraries can use those tools too to verify to use our fake and to verify that their software works with both the fake implementation and the real implementation. Um, I've already said that we have a test uh, mix-in, which means that the, the tests are all defined in one class, but that class isn't the, isn't the test case that gets discovered by the test runner. The way the test runner discovers the tests, or the way the actual test cases are produced, are by way of a test case uh, factory function, which I'll describe. So what this does, it, this is a function, can everyone see the code on that screen? Anyone can't see it, I can zoom in. This is a function which takes a, a Docker client factory. And the Docker client factory is a is a function, or a, or a, uh, an, uh, a it could be a function, or it could just be a class, which, when um, instantiated, provides a an implementation of the, uh, the interface and the tests. Um, and then we define our, then we define um, a nested class called tests, where we mix in our, our set of Common tests with the with the unit test test case base class, and we define a setup method, which, because this is in a closure and it's a nested class, will set up the Docker client factory called the Docker client factory that was passed in when we call this factory uh, this test factory uh, uh, function, and then it returns the, the this this test uh, case class which has been built dynamically. Then, to put it all together, we can use that function to generate dynamically a base class for our actual tests. So here we see how we are going to uh, dynamically generate the, the tests against the real Docker client um, by passing in as the Docker client factory a uh, the the Docker the real Docker client class uh, uh, pre pre-curried um, uh, with the uh, with certain required parameters, in this case the version equals auto, which allows it to, allows these tests to run against um, uh, any any version of the Docker daemon. That may not be quite, quite the right thing to do, but uh, it gets the, it got me where I, uh, it got me far enough to give the talk. And then we have a similar case uh, in the, for the, for the testing of the fakes. We pass in this time the fake Docker client, um, and again, we're inheriting from uh, we're, we're inheriting from the class which has been produced by this factory function. And it's worth noting also that this um, dynamically this this test class is a, gives us a place to document the the purpose of this uh, uh, set of tests. And with that in place, we can start now fleshing out the interface. So we've so far on, on, all we've got is a test for the uh, that the interface. A ZOPE interface test, which ensures that all the methods are in place and that the methods have the right number of arguments. What we now need to do is start adding methods to the interface. So we can start anywhere, really. It, it's, I'll, I'll describe in a minute the, the, some of the problems with, with this that we encountered on doing this, but I've chosen to start with a test for, um, for the uh, DockerPy containers method. So we can start at the very beginning by making sure that 
at some complications while I've, while I've been writing this. And the first complication, uh, this, is, this has gone a bit wonky, but um, the, the first complication is that when you're, you're, you're trying to write tests which only exercise public a, the public APIs, and so you're trying to, in creating a container, you need to create the container and then ensure that that container is, is listed or you want to um, clean up after, uh, no, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. You want to test that all the containers that are available are listed, but in order to test that, you need to create some containers. So you can't quite implement it uh, method by method. You have, to, you, have to do the, you have to do the practical thing and implement uh, chunks of this functionality together. Another problem I encountered, and which I, we always encounter when we, we're doing this sort of stuff, is that you, you want to start, from the very start, if you're running this, the tests against a real Docker client, you need, to, you need a way of cleaning up the containers that you've created after the tests have completed. And so to do that, and if, you're only get, if, you're, if your aim is to only use the public APIs, you have to implement a remove container method. Um, but you can't test the remove container method until you've got a way of listing and creating containers. Um, so again, you have to be practical about this and, 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 and implement the, the, the features in sensible chunks. And this is what I, uh, we try at work to only test the public APIs. It's tempting when you're trying to overcome the problems I've just described. It's, the temptation is to test the sort of implementation details might have private helper methods inside your implementation. You might start trying to write tests for those, but usually it's not worth it, and it's, it's usually just sticking to the, uh, testing only the, the public parts of the interface, the parts of the uh, class which have been defined in our ZOF interface. So, uh, what's the time? That's, that's, all, that's as far as I'm going to go with uh, showing you the, the implementation I've done of this fake Docker client, but I wanted to um, briefly describe some other examples of this. Um, not, maybe not all of them, fit. some of them are not quite the same as what I've described. Um, the first one is the one that uh, I've most recently worked on at work, where we, uh, we, had a, we were tasked with creating a, um, a system for our software which allows us to attach, uh, to, to create and attach and destroy cloud block devices such as um, AWS EBS volumes and OpenStack Cinda volumes. But we don't want to have to run our tests against AWS, although we do, and we don't want to have to run our tests against OpenStack, or, uh, but, but we do have to do that. They're very slow tests to run. What we really want to do is run our, run our tests for this, for this iBlock device, device API against a fake, a sort of simulation of those um, those two cloud block devices. So you can have a look at the code in, uh, in GitHub here. I'll post all of these uh, slides after the talk. You can have a look at the code and you'll see that we've implemented a, a loopback simulation of these um, uh, block devices. So we've got a, an implementation of iBlock device which creates a loopback uh, file system and attaches them to one or more to, to one process and detaches them and attaches them to another process. And by doing that, we have a way of uh, testing, uh, running our uh, tests for this, for this API much faster than we would uh, if we had to run them against the real um, Amazon and open rack space, for example, uh, systems. Uh, another example which I am interested in but I haven't yet tried, and um, developed by a guy developed by, amongst others, some of the Twisted developers, uh, Glyph from Twisted Matrix. Um, this is a, a system which allows you to um, create a fake version of the OpenStack um, REST APIs. And this is something we definitely like to use at work. The trouble is it doesn't yet implement the, um, the Cinder APIs. But that's some, again, it's something which I'd like to try and do. Um, and what this what this is is a is a, a web a web service which can be primed with uh, both uh, successful and error cases, and it's a web service which you can make REST API requests to, and it tracks the state of the 
as the, as the requests come in. So you can say create a Nova instance and then you can ask that fake API for a list of the Nova instances and it'll return you the fake that you've just created, or the details of the fake you've just created. And it even, I think, uh, simulates the uh, Keystone authentication for OpenStack as well, which would be really useful. Um, another one from work, um, uh, my colleague Itamar develops uh, a, a library called Elliot, which is a what we call a structured, li a structured logging library. And from the start, he's built into it uh, various um, features which make it easy for us to test the code that uses Elliot. So he's implemented um, a, a memory logger and a, um, he, he has done it the way I've described. He's got an interface called iLogger and a memory logger which implements that interface. And he's got, he's gone further than that. He's actually, in, in the public um, Elliot package, he provides tools for testing that your code uh, logs the correct messages and logs the, the correct errors. So that's, really, that's a really good example of this sort of technique. And finally, I thought worth mentioning is a, a recent blog post by Glyph about going even further and um, writing your fakes in such a way that you don't pollute the, the fake with, with um, attributes that aren't actually um, present in the real implementation. And it's got a really neat way of, um, of, 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 of achieving that separation. Which again, I haven't yet, uh, I haven't done that with my code for this for this uh, talk, but um, I, that's the next thing I'm, I'm intending to do. So I think we're about out of time. Quickly to summarise, we've seen some of the problems with unverified fakes and mocks. Uh, we've looked at some of the some examples of those problems. Um, we've quickly shown. Uh, well, I've briefly shown how we might go about writing a, a verified fake from scratch. And we've seen some examples of other, um, other Python, Python examples of this uh, technique. Uh, and that's really the, it's only a half an hour talk, so that's all I've got to say. I think I'll leave it there. Thank you for your attention. Right, officially we don't have any time for Q&A, so you're free to go to lunch, but if you'd like to stay and ask questions, then you're free to do that. And does anybody have questions?